Aircraft instrumentation started out as dial type gauges that displayed all the required information for flight to the pilot. These dials were all located on the instrument panel which required the pilot to look down into the cockpit to see. Military aircraft began using optical reflector gun sights, which was projected on a glass pane placed in the forward view of the pilot to make aiming easier. Reflex sights evolved into the gyro gun sight which automatically computed bullet drop by moving the aim point to account for aircraft motion. In 1958, the British Royal Navy developed a new type of gun sight for the Blackburn Buccaneer attack aircraft. Because the Buccaneer was designed to fly at very low level at high speed while delivering its bombs, the time to identify the target and release was only seconds and didn't allow time for the pilot to look down into a bomb sight or at his instruments. This led to the development of the strike sight, which combined the already established bomb and aiming reticules with altitude and airspeed readouts in a single display projected onto a combiner glass. This was the first operational head-up display, or HUD. After incorporation of the HUD, it was noted by the Royal Navy that Buccaneer pilots became better at piloting their aircraft as they could keep their view of the outside world while having all the essential information in front of them without having to look down into the cockpit. At this time, the Royal Navy decided to expand the information that was presented on the HUD to make it even more useful for general piloting and not just weapons aiming. The first modern aircraft HUD can be attributed to the French in the 1960s. They introduced a standardised HUD symbol system to make transitioning between aircraft types easier along with centralising all the critical flight data in the pilot's field of view. After the introduction of the HUD, the cockpit instrument panel was freed up to display secondary and backup information that is less time critical. Modern aircraft HUDs are the primary flight instrument and display all the required readouts about the aircraft's situation such as bore sight or where the aircraft's nose is actually pointing, altitude, airspeed, attitude, direction via a compass, angle of attack, acceleration, flight path vector and other navigation data. In military combat aircraft, the HUD also includes gun aiming information, missile queuing, and target designator box direction and range. To keep the amount of information being presented on the HUD to a reasonable amount and prevent oversaturation, it was split into modes that show the most pertinent readouts for each. These modes include takeoff and landing, navigation, air to air, and air to ground. The HUD has evolved further to become integrated into the pilot's helmet as a helmet mounted display or HMD. A HMD combines head tracking with projected HUD information onto the helmet's visor to give the same information while not being constrained to the front of the cockpit. This gives the pilot a tactical advantage by allowing them to remain aware of all the same flight critical information regardless of where they are looking. Military equipment manufacturers and operators around the world have come together to create agreed upon standards in the way that HUD symbology is displayed. A link to one such document is provided in the description below. The HUD in Star Citizen has been evolving over time with changing information display and symbology and CIG has indicated they intend to have unique HUDs from each ship manufacturer. Designers will have to consider how they make these HUDs unique but still make them intuitive and not so different from one another that they require relearning of how to use each one. With this in mind, what makes a good HUD or HMD? What kind of information should be heads up in our view at all times? The first ships to get their unique HUDs were the Freelancer and the Gladius. These came with patch 2.6, which unfortunately also removed the Combat Visor Interface or CVI, which is Star Citizen's version of the HMD. The Gladius and the Freelancer HUDs still have the same information as before, but changed the orientation of the throttle position and speed tape to horizontal instead of vertical. The standard design for display readouts that are tied to the direction of movement of control should move in the same direction as the control is moved. For instance, the throttle moves fore and aft and affects acceleration. Therefore, the readout should move fore and aft or up and down on a HUD. In my opinion, throttle and speed readouts on the Gladius and Freelancer HUDs are less intuitive now than they were in 2.5. These two readouts need to move back to where they were in 2.5 in my opinion. An improvement that would make all HUDs a lot more usable is modes tied to the phase of flight that the ship is in, that is, takeoff and landing, navigation and combat. Breaking down the HUD information in this way, just as in real life, can help keep critical information required in front of the pilot while not overwhelming them with it. Landing and takeoff. The information required for takeoff and landing can include altitude above and attitude in relation to whatever it is they're trying to land on. And in the case of landing inside a carrier or other large spacecraft, alignment to the landing bay opening would also be very useful. 
This could take a similar form to the instrument landing system cross, where the two lines on the HUD would show you if you are too high or too low, too far left or too far right. This mode would be triggered by putting the landing gear down. Navigation. Navigation is the default mode for the HUD and would display the information needed to be able to get from point A to point B in space or on a planet. Navigation would need a marker showing the next waypoint or destination along with the distance to it. It could also show the required time and fuel at the current speed to reach it. Combat. Receiving critical combat information on the HUD when in a dogfight can literally mean the difference between life and death. The information needed would include target and wingman designation, range and direction, weapon aiming pip, missile queuing, weapon status in the form of ammunition, munitions and or heat status, and countermeasure status. Of course, this is just the start and other information may become just as important down the road as the game evolves. The Combat Visor Interface or CVI used to display a lot of the combat information described along with your ship's status, your target status and any targets you had pinned. Although it's true that some of this information such as your and your target's hull and shield status has transferred to the cockpit's multifunction displays or MFDs, the loss of the remainder of this functionality is sorely missed as it was extremely useful and is now unable to be displayed or displayed easily. In atmospheric flight, the HUD will also display your ship's attitude, pitch and roll, in relation to the planet you are flying over, along with altitude above the ground. Although there was no up and down in space, the ability to have your ship's orientation relative to your original position would still be a useful addition even when not in atmosphere. This would give the pilot an easy way to know if they have rolled 180 degrees to unload that g-force or pitched around 180 degrees to re-attack a target. The HUD is a critical part of understanding what is happening to your ship and the information that is shown on it must be right. If CIG can nail ship HUDs, it will make flying your ship all the more intuitive and fun. Now, why would Good hunting pilots. So For more information on how spacecraft systems work in Star Citizen, please refer to the spacecraft flight manuals found on the RSI website. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching.